as the coronavirus outbreak spikes for a third time, nearing new records in daily cases, the president has decided on a closing message for the last two weeks of the election. Whine about having to campaign in swing states and attack 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Look, I know this might be a little judgmental, but I'm starting to think that maybe, just maybe, Donald Trump is not exactly a political mastermind. For example, he basically tried to make his whole campaign about Joe Biden's record on China, and then it turned out Trump is the one who has a secret bank account in China. Soon, we're going to find a photo of Trump burning down a Target wearing a shirt that says, I'm an anarchist. In fairness, if Trump didn't want the Times to find out about this, he probably shouldn't have left that folder on his desktop labeled, not a secret Chinese bank account. The account was secret. Although knowing Trump, there's a good chance he would have just blurted it out at some point anyway. Mr. President, do you need some cash for the church service? Yeah, just take it out of the secret Chinese bank account. And then last night, Trump was in Erie, Pennsylvania for another one of his coronavirus infectathons. And his big pitch to voters in Erie was that he didn't want to be in Erie. Four or five months ago when we started this whole thing, I, because, you know, before the plague came in, I had it made. I wasn't coming to Erie. I, I mean, I have to be honest. There was no way I was coming. I didn't have to. I would have called you and said, hey, Erie, you know, if you have a chance, get out. But we had this thing won. And then we got hit with the plague. And I had to go back to work. Hello, Erie. May I please have your vote? Man, you never hear the crowd at a Trump rally that silent. Yeah, we suck. Lock us up. Although, in fairness to Trump, Erie's not my favorite Great Lake either. There's at least one that's superior. I feel like that should have come a tick faster. <laughs> that joke was originally submitted for a Ziggy cartoon, but it was rejected. <laughs> Seriously, though, that's quite the political masterstroke, Mr. President. Tell the people whose votes you're courting you didn't want to be there. The last time I left Erie, I prayed I'd never be back, that I'd never have to look at your slack-jawed faces, and yet here I am. Here I am. Anyway, Vote for me, you bingo hall townies, and try not to choke to death on the sticker. By the way, I don't think he was kidding. Trump usually goes for an hour plus at these group therapy sessions, but he told the crowd he was wrapping up early because it was cold. And in conclusion, we'll make this a little shorter. You know, it's like about 40 degrees. I don't want people, I don't want to lose anybody. You got to go vote. So we're going to go a little shorter because you got to go vote. A little, little shorter. <laughs> All right, first of all, how can you be cold? Your trench coat could double as a business poncho. But yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't want anything bad to happen to all those people you invited to a packed crowd during a raging pandemic. Their health and safety is definitely your top priority. You know, we've been saying this, but Trump is doing so much to help spread the virus. He should start traveling with a mascot named COVID Larry. Give it up for COVID Larry, folks. He'll be shooting T-shirts into the crowd with his T-shirt gun. We just have the one shirt, so if you get it, put it on, take a picture, and then hand it to the next guy. But in all seriousness, I'd like to make this offer to Trump. We will make the COVID Larry costume for you and send it to your campaign free of charge if you decide to adopt him as your official mascot for the last two weeks of the campaign. I mean, what the hell, just go for it, man. You've called COVID a blessing from God, claimed it made you immune, that it made you feel powerful like Superman. You've held packed rallies without masks or distancing, had a White House super spreader event, made people drive around with you while you were actively infected and told your supporters it's just like the flu. I mean, you should just come out as the pro-COVID candidate already. Might as well give it a shot, nothing else is working. And if you do that, our wardrobe department will send you the costume ASAP. We'll even size it so it fits Mike Pence perfectly. Uh, Mr. President, I cannot breathe in here. Just put on the suit, Mike. Do your dance and let's get the hell out of Erie. Every day it seems we get more horrific news about the pandemic. On Tuesday, the CDC said the pandemic had caused nearly 300,000 more deaths than expected in a typical year. And a study found that 8 million Americans went into poverty during the ensuing economic crash. Or as the president put it yesterday on Fox and Friends. Well, we are living with it and we're having the vaccines coming out very soon. With or without the vaccines, we're rounding the turn. What's the right path for us right now on opening up our society? Well, we have to open up and we live with it and we open up our schools. And I'm the one that got Big Ten and Pac-12 football back. You know, I got that back. That wasn't coming back and I got it back. Hope people realize that. That was pure and simple me or whatever. You really negate the pure and simple when you follow it with whatever. The sky is blue, pure and simple, or whatever. Of course, on Fox and Friends, it's not even a given that the sky is blue anymore. 
They went there. That's there, where they yeah. met, and it's pretty much been green skies ever since. And by the way, they green, also have the green F skies. <laughs> oh, should I say blue skies? Uh huh. <laughs> also, is it just me or does it sound like Trump's heart is not really in it anymore? You could almost picture him on the other end of the phone in the White House, packing his things in a cardboard box, not really paying attention, half-heartedly making <laughs> up because he knows it's what they want to hear. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I save college football or whatever. Hey, Melania, where's the Instapot? Because I'm packing the kitchen, Mel. Mel, you sold it. With the yard, Mel, what about my jambalaya? Mel, what about Tuesday night jambalaya my night? Don't slam the door, Mel. By the way, scientists have said we wouldn't need to lock down again if we just did a few basic things that public health officials are asking for, things like testing and tracing on a massive scale, closing down and subsidizing the most dangerous businesses like indoor bars, practicing universal mask wearing, hand washing and social distancing. If we did those things on a nationwide scale, we could get back to some semblance of normalcy until vaccines and therapeutics help us eradicate the disease. Dr. Fauci has said as much repeatedly. It occurs because of the lack of implementation of simple public health measures. It's so frustrating because it's not rocket science. You don't need to lock down. It's not rocket science unless you're a famous idiot like Donald Trump. Let's remember, this is the same guy who at the start of the pandemic went to CDC headquarters to project confidence and strength and literally just held up a printout of a coronavirus particle like a fifth grader who forgot he had a science project due. The coronavirus uh, particle was first discovered uh, by the 18th century German scientist Johann Wikipedia. And look, I make fun of him for being dumb, but I gotta give it up. He's the only person I know who can get the printer to work. The reality is Trump and the GOP just do not care about the pandemic. They don't care that nearly 300,000 more Americans have died this year than otherwise would have. They don't care that 8 million people fell into poverty as a result of the economic crash. The one and only thing they care about is whining and moaning about how the media treats them. It's the only thing that seems to get them genuinely animated. They love to complain about not getting special treatment on social media platforms. My favorite recent example of this is a bizarre Instagram post from Donald Trump Jr. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Just watching my algorithms get crushed. I guess I did something to piss off the Instagram gods, so hopefully you're seeing this stuff anyway. We'll do what we can. Talk to you soon. I think Instagram might have shadow banned you for not knowing your angles. Was this shot from the point of view of the teddy bear you tell your problems to? Also, where are you? Is that a sleeper car on Amtrak? And do you have a giant head or is that a hospital pillow? You gonna be Daria for Halloween? <laughs> Seriously, dude, I never thought I'd say this, but you know, get a journal or something. Don Jr.'s in his 40s, but he sounds like his best bro in junior high just told him he can't have that extra ticket to OzFest. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Dirk says he's taking his girlfriend to OzFest. I guess I did something to piss off the heavy metal gods. Talk to you soon. <laughs> this gets to a core truth of Trumpism. The Trump era has revealed many things about what the modern conservative movement actually stands for rather than what they pretend to stand for. And one thing we've learned over the last four years is that the so-called party of personal responsibility is actually filled with whiny, petulant babies who fill their diapers whenever you don't give them exactly what they want. It's a party of Veruca assaults. For example, last week after NBC inexplicably did Trump the huge favor of scheduling a rival town hall at the exact same time as Joe Biden's town hall on ABC, which was scheduled first, this is how Fox host Sean Hannity reacted. Moments ago, NBC fake news did their best to just ambush President Trump at tonight's town hall. Uh, he pretty much debated Savannah Guthrie, and what we all witnessed was not journalism. It was a political debate with the morning host of the Today Show serving as, well, Joe Biden's surrogate, and it didn't really work out well for her. It didn't work out well for her. I mean, she's still hosting the Today Show. In two weeks, Trump's going to have a hard time getting booked on Maury. Can you at least book me on your I had sex with a porn star during Shark Week show? I think I'd be a good guest. Maury. The big news that came out of the town hall was the president refusing to disavow a conspiracy theory. He retweeted that Barack Obama and Joe Biden had the members of the Osama bin Laden raid murdered after they killed a bin Laden body double and not the actual bin Laden who, according to this theory, is still alive. Trump isn't qualified to be president, but he should definitely have a 3 a.m. call-in show on public access television. 
Tonight's topic is Jurassic Park, a real place being covered up by aliens working for the CIA. Can we put the number up on the screen? We can? Oh, because Kevin's not here today? Okay, I forgot. Well, here's my first guest, Curtis Sliwa. Also, even if that insane theory was true, are you sure that's the message you want to close out the election with? There might be an out-of-control pandemic and a once-in-a-century economic crash, but don't worry, folks, the world's most wanted terrorist is still alive. Do you guys remember Joe Biden's famous line from 2012? Osama bin Laden is dead and General Motors is alive! Well, a GM plant in Ohio closed after Trump promised to save auto jobs, so I guess his new slogan is, GM is dead and Osama bin Laden is alive, which, by the way, was also a rejected Ziggy. So Hannity thought it was an ambush. You might be asking, in what way exactly was this town hall biased against Trump? Well, on his radio show Monday, Sean Hannity invited on a guest who broke maybe the biggest story yet of the 2020 campaign. Now we got to debate Miranda Devine on Thursday, and we've got another liberal uh, member of the mob that is going to be the moderator in this case. And I'm like, how does this even happen? Why does any Republican agree to allow this presidential debate commission to be involved in any way, shape, manner, or form anyway? You took the words right out of my mouth. That debate last week with Savannah Guthrie was a joke. It was a disgrace. She just spent the entire time badgering him. And it was a setup from the start. He was sitting on a tiny little plastic stool that could barely fit half a buttock, let alone a whole one. And uh, he was uncomfortable the whole time. I wish that were true, only to imagine how it went down. Okay, I think we're almost ready to go. Let's just bring those stools out and wait. That stool is too big. Bring out the one for only half a buttock. It's ridiculous that a chair for Trump can be too small. I mean, even when he has a giant chair, he only uses six inches of it. Doesn't matter how big a chair is, he's going to sit like he's watching the season finale of 24. He's always lurching forward like someone just slammed on the brakes. When he meets with world leaders, he should wear a seatbelt. It's still just shocking to me the degree to which grown adults on the right whine and moan about not getting special treatment. Yesterday, for example, Trump threatened to release footage from an interview he agreed to do with 60 Minutes correspondent Leslie Stahl after angrily storming out. Multiple sources telling CNN now that President Trump abruptly ended a solo interview with CBS's 60 Minutes today, and the president did not return to the room for a joint interview with Vice President Mike Pence. President Trump sat down with CBS News Leslie Stahl for 45 minutes before getting up and leaving and telling CBS that he thought they had enough material. He also tweeted a six-second video clip of Stahl not wearing a mask while talking with producers at the White House. The president later tweeted, quote, I am pleased to inform you that for the sake of accuracy and reporting, I am considering posting my interview with Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes prior to airtime. This will be done so that everyone can get a glimpse of what a fake and biased interview is all about. Well, it sounds like it went great, but it was at the White House, so if the chair didn't have full buttock coverage, that's on you. I'd love to see the Trump version of this interview. I'm guessing when he releases the footage, it'll look something like this. People are saying you have so much money and you are going to win. Also, your big gotcha moment is you caught Leslie Stahl not wearing a mask for, what, six seconds? This will shock you, but we have blockbuster footage of you not wearing a mask at basically every public event you've ever done. Why does Trump think this argument is a winner? Leslie Stahl wasn't wearing a mask for six seconds after an interview. Meanwhile, the day before he tested positive for COVID, Trump was tossing hats into a packed crowd like the Phoenix Suns gorilla. Hundreds of Americans are dying every day, and the country is in the midst of its third coronavirus wave, which is already nearing new records and which experts predict could be the worst yet. And amid all that, the White House has decided to spend its time attacking a 60 Minutes correspondent, even going so far as to spend time reviewing footage of the interview, searching for ways, I guess, to make her look bad? He didn't walk out. I mean, the characterization of that, uh, he spent over 45 minutes with Ledley Stahl. I've looked at every single minute of the interview and then some. That's what you were spending your time on? You're the White House chief of staff, not an intern for TV Guide. There's a raging out of control pandemic and the White House chief of staff is pouring over tape of a 60 minutes interview like the Jets defensive coordinator after a blowout. Okay, everybody, do you, do you guys see what happened here? We forgot, we forgot to what? We forgot to tackle. Got to tackle. And what was the, what was he holding? The person we forgot to tackle? Do you remember? No? It wasn't a pointy brown egg. Ready? It was the football. Okay, guys. Love to not go through this every week. Trump and his toadies can whine about the media all they want. It doesn't change 
The basic story of the campaign, nearly 300,000 more Americans have died this year than otherwise would have, and 8 million have gone into poverty, and it could have been prevented. And remember that. When Trump comes to your town, tells you he doesn't want to be there, and says, Hey, hey, please have your vote. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.